All right, let's suppose that we have a semigroup with a right unit and every element has a right inverse. So remember, a semigroup is just a monoid, but we don't necessarily, or yeah, we don't assume that we have a unit. So it's a monoid, or, or it's just a set with, a, with an associative binary operation. That's all you have. Um, so we want to show that this is a group. So let A be an element of G and um, let B choose B and C such that AB equals BC equals 1R. So that basically means that B is the right inverse of A and C is the right inverse of B. So basically what we would expect from this is for that C to, well, if it turns out that this is a group, then C is going to be equal to A, but we don't know that yet. So we're just going to have to do some symbol pushing around. So B equals B1R. Um, but 1R is AB, so this is BAB. So 1R, which is BC, is we replace B with BAB, C. We'll replace B with BAB, and then you have the C still there. Um, but now this BC is 1R, and so we have BA, 1R. And so your 1R is the right unit, so this is just BA. So thus, if A times B is 1R, then BA equals 1R. So meaning that if B is the right inverse of A, then A is the right inverse of B. And we had, we, that's something we had to prove. We didn't know that um, before proving it. It wasn't given to us automatically, even though we typically think of it being automatic. So using this, this we have 1r times a is a b a but that's um so this is again assuming that a times b equals 1r so 1r times a equals a times or we replace 1r with a b a but we know that if a b equals 1r then b a equals 1r as well so we can replace this thing on the right here with 1r um, but because 1 is 1R is a right unit, this is equal to A. So we've proven that, so we, we, we assume that this equality holds, that if you multiply on the right by 1R, you get A. But now we have that if you multiply on the left by A, on the left by 1R, you get A. And so 1R is a left unit as well. Um, so... So one R, thus, this one R is also a left unit, and so it is the unit. Um, we're going to call it one from now on because I don't want to have to write out R because that's like one other thing that you have to write. Um, and so is the unit one, and we know that it is unique. We because when we first defined what a monoid is, uh, and defined what a unit of a monoid is, like the the next sentence after that is proving uniqueness. It's like one line. Um, so if if you can't remember that, then just go look at that real quick or derive it yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so, since every, so since, here, I'll, I'll just, so since for all A and G, there is some B in G such that AB equals 1 equals BA, B is precisely a inverse and again we know B to be unique 
it's another thing that we proved when we defined what a group is, is that we said if an element has an inverse, then it's unique. So hence, G is a group. And so there you go. Now this problem, it's, it's a, I don't know. I really, I don't, I don't really like this problem. It kind of make now that I know how to do it, it's like, oh, that that's actually a little neat. But this, this especially like I was actually stuck on this for a little bit, and the main thing was like this, this, uh, these uh, tricks that you have to do here. You have to look at, you have to introduce both B and C, and then just do a whole bunch of symbol pushing, um, in order to get this result that um, if a b equals 1r then b a equals 1r and then use that to prove everything else pretty easily and I feel like that's a little bit there's no real I, I, I've complained about this before with other problems but it's it's not like I, I didn't find it necessarily very illuminating um, I had to look online to get hints for what how, how to get this problem starting, like, what you start off with. Um, I was right in thinking, like, well, the first thing, well, if 1R is the right unit, you should expect it to be the left unit as well. And so, um, I kind of figured that this was going to be, like, the first construct, the, the, the first step in the proof. Um, but you needed to get there somehow, and maybe you had to do some strange manipulations to a whole bunch of stuff. And that's what you ended up having to do. And this type of thing, it's it's not very illuminating. It doesn't help you understand the group that much, I don't think. It's just you have to somehow stumble across the right combination of symbols to put together and do this weird BABC thing here, which, like, I don't know, whatever. So, I don't know. I'm not sure if I quite like this problem. Just And, and the other thing is, like, when are you ever going to be in, in a scenario where you have a semi-group with a right unit and a right inverse, um, and you're going to want, like, like, when are you actually going to, like, use this problem, I guess. But that's, that's not really important. What's, what's important is that the problem shows that you understand what's going on. Um, and I think everything after this step is, like, just understanding but the but this trick this trick here I, I i don't think that knowing how to introduce this whole babc thing here shows that you understand the material i think it just shows that you like hit your head against a wall a whole bunch of times just out of frustration of how to do this and then you just stumbled upon the right thing to do and it worked out and that's that's the type of problem that i don't like but anyway enough of enough of my rambling here we have a solution, and so we're done.